is possible to open the door but not to leave it open. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, we can. <laughs> Okay, so the next talk uh, is about quantitative call by value in habitation, and it is given by uh, Victor Ariel. Uh, yes, thank you. So, um, don't be scared about the number of uh, pages. Uh, <laughs> it's normal, and uh, I will end at 10 minutes, so don't be scared. <laughs> Wonderful. So, we'll try to keep going on call by value, and in particular, we'll speak about quantitative call by value in habitation. And to talk about inhabitation, we need a calculus. So we'll use the same calculus as, as Julio mentioned, and which is a Corbat value calculus. And we'll also need a typing system. And it is the, typing si the quantitative typing system that Julio mentioned. And the goal is to solve inhabitation is in those settings. So then we'll speak about inhabitation. I'll try to convince you how to solve the problem using a finite basis and an algorithm to try to solve it. So let's start with the calculus. So as uh, Julia mentioned, we first need to, um, because it is a core bar value calculus, we start with uh, usual lambda calculus and we split what we, we call values. Uh, we also use sub explicit substitution, sorry, and we split some of them to be values, so we choose uh, variables and abstractions. And this forms the syntax of our calculus. And with this, we use the same rules as Julio mentioned, which is first uh, the beta rules, which uh, are firing uh, pending substitution, so explicit ones. So in this setting, we are fired uh, substitution, but we haven't done it yet. And so the second step is to do it, but to do it, we need a value. And once we have a value, we can do the substitution. And that's how it works. And since we're using uh, explicit substitution, everything is done at a distance. So there may be pending substitutions in between. That was for the calculus. And now we can talk about the typing system. So we, the idea is to use uh, an interse intersection type system. So usually what we see is simple types. So to each program, you associate one type. and by doing that, what we have is a subset of a terminating uh, term, but this means that there exist terminating terms which are not typable. And to bring these terms back, an idea can be to not only associate one type, but a finite collection of them. And by doing so, what we have is that we bring back the missing terms and characterize termination, which is quite interesting. And uh, since we're using uh, intersection, we need a few properties on them mainly uh, associativity and commutativity. However, there is a choice about idempotency. And both of them could, could potentially work. When we take idempotency, what we have is only a qualitative system, meaning that we, have, um, we are characterizing termination, but we can't say more than that. What is really interesting is that when, when we are taking non-idempotent type system, we have something much stronger, which has which are quantitative properties, meaning that we are still characterizing termination. But furthermore, from the typing, we can uh, extract the size of the, the reduction to the normal form as well as the size of the normal form, which is something much stronger. So we're using, of course, uh, non limitant intersection types. And uh, we are therefore using uh, multi-types and that's what multi-sets, that's why we're calling them multi-types. And uh, this gives, the, with the usual presentation of Secon, it gives the following uh, type system. These are the three rules we usually see. There is a fourth one for explicit substitution. The thing to see here is only one thing, is that uh, when introducing values, we are introducing intersections. That's the main point. And therefore, in the application world, we are asking for intersection as the type of the argument. But that's pretty much all you need to know. And this type system is, of course, characterizing termination. <coughs> and so now that we have the two main elements to talk about inhabitation, let me shortly present the problem and try to convince you how to solve it. All right, so when we have a typing system, there are two main questions. The first one, 
uh, usual one is the typing. So someone gives you a program and you try to find a type context and a type to type it. And of course, for simple types, this is decidable. However, for intersection types, it is, decide it is uh, indecidable because we are characterizing termination. So we definitely can't decide the typing. However, what is interesting is to have a look at the dual problem, which is inhibition. So this time, someone is giving you the type context and the type, and you have to find a term, a program, that can be typed using it. This is decidable for simple type. However, for idempotent intersection type, it is undecidable. What is interesting is that when we have a look at non-idempotent intersection type, we are bringing back the decidability for call by name. And the goal here is to show it for call by value. So how to do it? We'll use what is called a finite, what we call a finite basis. So we'll try to do something a bit strong, stronger, which is to find all solution to the inhibition problem. However, this is problematic because there might be an infinite number of them. Typically, if we take a value, because we have subject reduction, by putting the identity in front of it, it also forms a solution, and so on and so on. So the set of solution is, of course, infinite. So one idea is to only search for a basis of all solution. And so we'll try to take the normal form, not only uh, on surface, meaning not under the lambda, but we need to go under the lambda because we can always add identity under a lambda and do um, an infinite family. So we'll take a normal form driven by the type derivation. But that is not enough. There is still a problem of infinite number of solution. And a way to see it is to have a look at this solution to the inhibition problem. It is built really easily. This is the axiom rule. We're just uh, introducing a variable. This is the introduction of a lambda. And what we see here, here is very, very important. What we see is that because if it is a value, it introduces an, inter an intersection, but in it introduces the empty intersection. And because of this, there, there are no premises on top of it. Then we just use an application, and we have our solution. However, because it is an empty intersection, this could have been anything. And this builds an infinite family of solution. And this is caused by the empty intersection, which allows us to introduce anything. So we add a little something. We introduce a new constant called intact, which will be used to uh, canonically represent the solutions, uh, the empty intersection solution. And by doing both the normal form driven by the type derivation and the untyped uh, constant, we uh, do something like this. We take the set of type of all, we reduce it to the solutions, to the normal form, and then we form something which we call the canonical solution. And this forms a basis in the sense that from the canonical, with simple operation that we call a span, meaning a redex expansion, as well as term plugging, plugging. so anywhere there's a bottom uh, constant, we can place anything. We are exactly obtaining the set of solution. So it is characterizing by a very easy span operation, the set of solution. And it is finite. So we can search for it. And that is what we will do with the algorithm. So the problem is a typing problem. So the algorithm will be uh, built in a similar, a similar manner using rules. And let's build just one to see how it goes. So the idea is to try to solve the inhibition problem for gamma sigma. And we'll try to replicate what would have been a run of the algorithm if the last rule was an application. So this is the application rule. And what we see is that the two premises of the application rule are forming uh, two sub inhibition problems. So a solution, an easy one, can be to look at them, do the corresponding recursive call, obtain the solution, and compose them. But this is a bit too easy, because we cannot simply do all the trees like this. First of all, because we don't know how to split the context. However, the context is finite, so we can always try all all the uh, combination of them, of the splittings, and 
well, try to build all the trees. But this is not the only problem. The second one is the type M of the arguments is missing. However, a very practical thing, a very you know, practical thing about the basis is that it tells us that the type of the head is always appearing in the type context gamma. So we can always search the type context gamma for the missing type M. And by doing so, we are able to uh, find M. But this, this is true only if we are building um, just the canonical. So we need to restrict, and I'll finish, we need to restrict the search by a grammar. And to do so, before each step, we are asking for the existence of a production rule on the grammar of canonicals. And by doing so, and restricting the term, we are able to uh, build an algorithm with a finite number of runs, so we can bound the run on height and width with uh, an easy measure. And we can show that it is correct and complete, that we find all canonical solutions. And using that, we're deciding the inhibition problem. So to summarize, we have an algorithm deciding a COBA value in imitation for quantitative settings, which gives us a basis, which is finding the whole solution set. And of course, we have an implementation because theoretically, the complexity is absolutely awful. But in practice, it, is, um, it depends on the depth and the size of the types, which are, which are pretty small. So it works very, very, very well. And uh, that's it, and thank you very much. Thank you. So your slides are uh, self-chairing. wondering if there's some applications of this for like uh, things like program generation or uh, testing for tools like quick check because you want to generate random terms of some type uh, as inputs for your tests um, that's a very good question um, first there's a close idea of application which is program synthesis but um, the, the thing is um, we are not searching for a good solution, we are just searching for all solutions. So for people doing real program synthesis, this is not a good result. However, if we are trying to uh, build a set of tests, it might be a good solution, but uh, we haven't looked at it. The only problem might be that we may want to be a bit uniform on the distribution if we only select some of them. And that could be a bit difficult because um, from what, what I know, counting lambda terms is difficult. So like having a uniform distribution on that could be difficult too. Right, but you, I, you I think also have to set a bound on how many times you want each argument to be used, I guess. Yes. Because yeah, you have to specify that in the type. Yeah? Yes, yeah. but it might be, it might be a, a good application. Thank you. Thanks. Any other question? Well, I have one. Uh, no, so I don't have one. <laughs> Is your implementation publicly available? Um, no, but it will be soon. <laughs> so I have one. <laughs> um, at some point, you, uh, you point out that uh, uh, the canonicals are obviously, there are f obviously a finite number of them. Yes. Is it obvious, or uh, is it <laughs> simply a consequence of the fact that your algorithm is complete? It, it is definitely a consequence of the algorithm. But uh, because to prove the algorithm finiteness, we're using a bound on the typing, we could directly do it on the derivation. But we, we are, uh, in the proof, we use the correctness, completeness, and termination of the algorithm to prove that it is indeed uh, finite. So it's not that easy. Yes. OK, thanks. Thank you. So we can thank Victor again. And the next speaker is uh, Fabio Reis. Uh, 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 um. this one? This one. Uh, 
No, that's weight. <laughs> 